Hey guys, I'm along Route 66 here and I'm staying at the historic Route 66 motel here in Tucumcari, New Mexico. And today, I'm going to show you how to clean and oil your k and filter. So my air cleaner is the Joker Machine's finned air filter. A lot of you guys will probably have a different third party air cleaner. But if you have the K&N filter, it will be basically the same procedure to clean and re-oil it. But I'm going to show you how I remove and then I'll show you how I reinstall this particular air cleaner. Once you get the filter removed, then you can follow the same process. So my air cleaner is removed with a 1 inch 12 point socket. And it gets pretty dirty and grimy in there, so I'm just going to grab a towel and clean that up. It doesn't take much, just kind of clean this up a little bit. It's been a good 3,000 miles since, or more probably, it's been a good 5,000 miles since I've cleaned this off, since I've done the 10K service. So it's good to really get this in here and clean this up. Now normally I'd remove these breather bolts, but I'm gonna be doing the 15K service really soon, like within the next two weeks or so. So I'm gonna leave it for now and clean it when I get home. So now when you do this, you're not gonna be able to ride your bike until the next day. So make sure you're not gonna be riding for the rest of the day because you're gonna to need to leave your air filter sit and dry for a while after you're done cleaning. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But first, I always forget to do this during my videos. I'm gonna do it right now. Hi, my name is Joe. I'm hanging out at the historic Route 66 motel here in Tucumcari, New Mexico. I'm riding along the Route 66 trip, but I just thought I'd take a moment to say, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Why should you? Because of these Route 66 trip videos, because of the service videos like I'm showing you now, because of the philosophy on the Harleys video. So I'm just a dude who loves motorcycles, travel, and talking about life with my philosophy on a Harley series. So if you like any one of those three things, you should probably hit the subscribe button right now. And click that bell icon so you know when I upload videos just like this. All right, so the lighting's probably terrible in here and I apologize for that, but I needed to do this now because my filter is pretty dirty and it's just something that I needed to do and these aren't that expensive and it doesn't take that long to do it, except for the waiting till the next day for this thing to dry out. What I'm using is the K&N recharger. There's an AutoZone store about half a mile up the road. I was hoping that they'd have something like this and sure enough, this does the trick. I paid $15 for both of these, so it includes the air filter cleaner and then the air filter oil. It comes in two different versions with the oil. This one's the aerosol version. It also comes in just a regular spray so you can spray it on there. Aerosol is a little bit easier to apply because it applies evenly. So that's kind of why I went with this one. So you could see in my filter that it's just full of gunk and bugs and a whole bunch of crap. Yeah, it needs to be cleaned. A couple different things. One, normally I'd be wearing gloves with this process but I don't have any with me today and I've got my motorcycle apart already, I'm not going to go run and get gloves. It's up to you whether you want to use gloves, but the crap in here is probably carcinogenic and not something you want to be touching on a regular basis. So go ahead and use some gloves. That wasn't a do as I say, not as I do moment. Normally I'd be wearing gloves if I had them, but I need my filter cleaned and I don't have gloves. To start, you're going to use the air filter cleaner and you're going to spray liberally all over the filter. Pretty simple. Just keep spraying it inside and out. Be generous with it. Don't be timid. While this stuff was $15, it's going to last beyond what you're using for this little filter. I'll take this home with me and even though I have some more of this at home, I'll still be able to use this when I need to clean my filter. The beauty of these K&N filters is they're reusable and that's why you want to clean it. You can already see now all the dirt and gunk and grime going into the sink. Hopefully I can clean that out so the hotel doesn't get pissed off at me. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of shake it a little bit, get some of that gunk out. And I'm going to keep spraying this because my filter is pretty dirty. Now notice I have not rinsed it at all. I'm just going to keep spraying this to get as much gunk out as possible. And it's really already starting to look pretty clean. 
So that's pretty good. I got a lot of the gunk out already. Now, I wanna leave this sit right here for 10 minutes. Now while I'm gonna leave this sit with the cleaner soaking in there, what I don't wanna do is let it dry out. So I'm only gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna rinse it off. So while I'm letting this sit with the cleaner on, I'm just gonna kinda of show you this hotel room a bit. So this is the historic Route 66 hotel and it's basically a mid-century modern hotel. It's kind of it's kind of kitschy, but it's kind of cool at the same time. Everything in this room dials both ways, right? So the sink, the hot, you turn it on by turning it to the left, turn it off by turning it to the right. Turn it on by turning it to the right, turn it off by turning it, turning it to the right. Same with the cold. It's the exact same thing as the shower. Shower does the same thing. It took me a little bit to figure out the shower. This room, I mean, it's, it's like straight out of the 50s. I mean, it's got these mid-century modern chairs here that are kind of cool, but kind of kitschy at the same time. But I guess that's what makes it cool. I guess that's what makes mid-century modern the thing. What I think about when I think of this room, when I was a kid in the late 70s, early 80s, I remember staying at Holiday Inns with my parents. Back then, we'd stay at the older Holiday Inns. One specifically that I remember staying at was Gatlinburg, Tennessee. My family, my parents met in, at Fort Knox, Kentucky. They were both in the Army. That's a great story. I'm going to tell that story on a Harley sometime. So my family would go down to the Tennessee, Kentucky area so they can reminisce and fall back in love, which was a beautiful thing. I remember the hotels looked like this back in the 70s because it was outdated back then. What, it was still mid-century modern. It was outdated then. It was like mid-century modern before mid-century modern was cool. That's kind of why I like this place. Let me show you something else. So this hotel is, I mean, I just love these little yellow chairs here. Just so cool. It's kind of nice. So I think our filter is probably ready to roll to be rinsed. Now there's a video out there of a very popular YouTuber doing a K&N filter cleaning and re-oiling. But what he does is he rinses it with pressure, with a hose, which is not what you want to do. It's gonna damage your filter and it's gonna ruin the air filtering properties. So what you wanna do is just rinse it with a, a mild cold stream of water. So I'm just gonna use the cold on here and I'm just gonna rotate it around and let the water flow from the inside out. The reason why it's from the inside out is to push all this dirt and grime out. If you pour water through the outside, it's gonna push all that gunk and grime back in. What you wanna do is you wanna push it out. So I'm simply gonna turn on the cold water and rinse it from the inside out. And you see all the bugs and crap starting to slip out of there now. It's perfect. And then the last resort will be grabbing some kind of tool to get that gunk out of there. And I think I'm going to have to do it with that bug right there. There's a few things in here that will likely need a tool. What I'm going to use is my Gerber tool here just to kind of get some of that gunk out. But I don't want anything too sharp because I don't want to bust the filter. So I'm going to find a tool here that's not too sharp, but will kind of do the trick for us. This uh, can opener here, it's got a pointed end, but it's not too sharp. So I'm just going to find these bugs in here, like this one right here, and I'm going to make sure I'm going to clean this can opener <laughs> thoroughly before I use it again. And I'm going to kind of loosen them up, and he might get stuck in there a little bit more. So what I'll do is I'll just rinse a bit, hopefully get him out of there. I mean, this filter already looks tons better. There, that bug got out. I think because my filter is so dirty, I'm gonna apply some more cleaner to it before we let it dry. So yeah, I'm gonna do another round of the cleaner here and then rinse again and then go ahead and let it dry. So again, applying this liberally, not holding anything back. So I got more cleaner applied, a lot more cleaner applied, and that's really looking good. I'm gonna leave it set for another 10 minutes, 
And because we gotta leave it sit for another 10 minutes, I'm gonna show you another cool thing about this motel. So yeah, this old hotel is pretty cool. So I just rinsed my filter one more time. What I'm gonna do now is let it dry overnight. And then I'm gonna show you through the magic of filmmaking how I'm gonna oil it the very next day. But first, it's gonna rain tonight and that's kinda why I'm here in Tukumkari. So I'm gonna cover my bike up, but I will see you tomorrow morning. All right, it's the next morning and I'm gonna go ahead and oil my filter. The desert said, interesting place man. It was in the low 40s last night, super cold, thunderstorming. I had my rain fly and my footprint for my tent wrapped around my bike and the places where I had it wrapped around kept it nice and dry. Yeah, the rain fly and the footprint, not ideal. I should really get a proper bike cover and I probably will but Traveling with something that big can be difficult, so that's why I haven't yet. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and oil our filter. Now you notice it's tons cleaner than what it was before I cleaned it. I mean, it doesn't look brand new. It would be, you know, red with the oil that they put on there, but it's tons, tons cleaner. Now, as I was saying, there's two different types. There's the aerosol, what I have, and then there's just the, the bottle that you squeeze onto the filter. Aerosol is the one that I wanted to use today. I've used the other type before, but so I'll explain both. So with the aerosol, you hold it about three inches away and you spray it on each one of the crowns here. With the regular bottle type, you hold it on top of each crown and you squeeze a little bit onto each crown. So I'll start by spraying on each crown here. And I wanna know where I start. So this little metal piece here that holds the entire filter together, I'm gonna to start just below that and work my way around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this settle for about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna go back and look for the areas where it's not pink, it doesn't have oil, and I'm gonna respray it. All right, so now it's been about 20 minutes and what I did midway through, about 10 minutes into it sitting here, I flipped the filter so the oil would run down to both sides. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and find some spots that are whiter or not red and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot maybe just a few but honestly not not a whole lot i'm also looking on the inside to see where the oil didn't flow through where it's white so it's like right there it's a little bit white so on the other side here i'm going to spray a little bit That's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is just kinda, on the outside part on each side, I'm just gonna kinda wipe off the excess. And then I'm gonna install it. So I'm gonna install this now. I'm on the road so I don't have a torque wrench with me. So I'm not gonna torque it to spec. I'm gonna tighten it to what I think it should be. And then on the road today, occasionally I'm gonna check it, make sure it's not coming loose. But it's a pretty easy installation. You hold the filter, like so. And you begin hand tightening the bolt. And once you have it secure enough where it's not gonna completely fall off, you can begin tightening it. Now before I tighten it too much, I want to make sure that this metal piece is facing towards the back. It's no big deal if you have it in the front like this, 
one on top or on the bottom. It's just about looks. So not too loose, not too tight. Yeah, I did it by feel. But like I said, I'm gonna be checking it throughout the day today to make sure it doesn't come loose at all. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you liked it, go ahead and click on that like button. It helps out this channel an awful lot. If you're new here, or if you watch a few of the videos, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And of course, click on that bell icon so you know when I upload videos just like this. Why should you subscribe? Because I have videos on the road just like this where I'm servicing my Harley Iron 883. I also got other service videos. I got the 10K series and other service videos for your Harley Iron 883. I also have travel series like the one I'm on now, this Route 66 trip, philosophies on a Harley, stories on a Harley, a lot of great content on this channel. So go ahead and click on that subscribe button. So ride safe out there guys, and keep your wheels rolling in the right direction. I'll see you in the next video.